Here we are, the final part of our discussion on the Wheel of Time TV show season one finale. This is the final part. It'll be about another hour because we talked about this thing for three hours. I don't know how we did it, but we did it. So if you have not watched or listened to parts one and two, links to both of those are in the show notes and description below the episode or for the episode if you're listening on one of the podcasting apps. So make sure you go and check those out so you get to enjoy the full discussion. But here we are. We're going to start part three. Hopefully you enjoy it. Hopefully you've been enjoying it so far. And thank you so much for listening. And I'm going to shut up so that you can hear me and the others talk more. Because we're, we're moving through Rand at right, the end sorry. here. And we're, we're, we're going to come back to some final thoughts. So uh, if you have a point to make other than we're going to slide it in deeper. Um, <laughs> and even if that is your point, you know, keep that in mind. Jot a note. Um, to finalize kind of what I was saying on Rand, uh, ultimately, I felt blue balled. <laughs> I've, this was Rand's coming out. This was like, yeah, we already know he's the dragon, but why should we actually fear and validate the dragon's power? And this was his scene to show why the dragon should be so feared, so powerful, so whatever. And instead, uh, as I think maybe Daniel pointed out earlier, might have been wrong. Instead, we get... This incredible, I, I, I hate to say that I hate it. I, I, I hate the way it was presented. I wish they had saved it for Egwene's accepted test. Mm-hmm. But we get Rand getting Egwene's accepted test as a test from a Ishmael that should be partially mad, but is not. This Ishmael is very much calm, collected, focused. This is an Ishmael that has lived for thousands of years, comes out every 40 years, and is like, this is how I would destabilize the world rather than the Ishmael that we get in the book series. That is like, Hey, uh, you got ghosts in your blood loose there. You should do serious shadow co- cocaine about it. <laughs> um, but uh, that's it. As far as like the scene by scene thing, uh, Josh going to pass it over to you for Rand, Rand or for, for Rand. Final. Okay, for Jam Rand. in Rand. Not, not full final. Full final we'll do after Remember, Jim like goes deep, out. Oh, here's, deep, here's deep, the deep. I actually really loved Rand. In All right, this. guys, say goodbye <laughs> to uh, Josh from the Black Thought yep. Podcast. There it is. <laughs> no, I really loved him. I, I thought he did a perfect job of A, distrusting Moraine, B asking all the annoying questions and get none getting none of the answers. And then when he was in the dream, he <coughs> God, <coughs> excuse me, sorry. <clears throat> when he was in the dream, he actually did something really smart and was like, No, I'm dreaming. I don't want to talk to you. Sheathed the sword, woke himself up, and continued on their quest. There are two things that I God, that I hated about the Rand story in episode eight. One, I hated the whole, I've seen this place before. No, you haven't. I did not like that. It was, it made no sense to me. It did no good for me. I didn't like it. It did not give me any happy feelings. The okay. second piece that I absolutely did not like, I didn't like the vision. Now, what we've talked about with the vision is that his the big key to him getting out of that was seeing or or thinking about Egwene's autonomy, Egwene's will, what Egwene wants. And I, I love that. The Egwene I knew wanted to be an eye to die at the White Tower. Scene, this scene upset me. It it to me, it made zero sense. It was not a battle. It wasn't even a battle of wills, per se. It was a dude taking advantage of a very untrained, very naive person. And for a season finale, for a finale, it just felt like a flan slowly collapsing in a cupboard. Like, it was just, it was, no. <laughs> It was deflating. It was deflating, and I did not like it. All right, but they're John. starting us at a two, so we can finish at a ten. 
later on. Oh, I, I can't wait to get into that argument. <laughs> uh, anyway, <laughs> re- remind me, like, Luke this, this, this is going to sound like what? a dick thing to say, but when I get to that point, remind me that I made the phrase fallacious argument, and I'll remember <laughs> what you're talking about. Okay, Jim, cool. I, I just honestly I wasn't saying that to be serious. So it was more just a case oh, of like, I know. I, I'm not <laughs> saying I'm not saying you were serious. Just that will remind me to address that point. And you'll understand why. All right. But Jim. I'm bringing the Rand points home. So I'm the last guy. So I don't have a lot to say. I'll be quick. Yosha knocked it out of the part with his, his acting. I thought he was a solid performance for Rand. Uh, everything that he portrayed, really, really well done. So I don't have any problem with that. The blight the way they're portraying what he's journeying through sucks. Hate it. Don't (laughs) care for it. Stupid trees. What the heck? Okay. So I I don't know what was behind the design and whatnot. (laughs) I don't want to judge the creative choices and the budget they have, but that sucked. Okay. Eye of the world being the same place as Shale Ghoul. What? No, hate it. Don't that, that does not work for me. I'm going to buy into the fact that just Moraine uh, doesn't know what she thinks she knows. I'm going with that. And that was a mistake, what she said, and that really isn't the truth. And please, please let that be so. Um, the seal, uh, that was cool. What they did then with, you know, getting Rand to break that. And I love the idea that that's what's going to free the rest of the Forsaken. But I am left with questions. I mean, they didn't clarify enough for us what we were seeing in the episode and what Rand had actually done. We're partly figuring this out from interviews afterwards and getting information. That's fine. They're going to clarify it more for us after the fact. Season two will help us understand. But I am wondering, are there six more friggin' room-sized seals all around the world? I mean, what does this mean? I don't know. I'm troubled. The final bit, the ending. Hey, Rand goes off on his own now. I actually, I had to sleep on that. I was not good with that at first. I'm like, this is totally changing things I love about the first three books in particular. But after sleeping on it, watching it again, I'm good with it. I think they can do really good things moving into season two based on that choice. Rand now going that way, and we're going to have other stuff with other characters, and I'm looking forward to it. I'm out. Oh, which brought me to a final point. And we'll make this, again, Love it or hate it point. Very brief, very quick, just like their appearance was. And we're going to start with Josh. Well, we'll go reverse order, actually. We'll go Jim, Josh, me, Rob, Morgan, Daniel. And I'll keep track, whatever. The appearance of the Sean Chan. Love it, hate it, in the middle, reserving judgment, whichever your argument is. We're not going to do any explanation why, just how you feel, starting with Jim. Sean Chin reveal. What do you think? Hate it, hate it, hate it, hate it, hate it. Okay. All right. Jim <laughs> hates it. Josh? I liked it. I thought it was good. Uh, for myself, I love it. See a little girl on a beach, cause a tsunami. Sounds reasonable to me. <laughs> that oh. sounds very ah! Sean Chin esque. You just made my point. Okay. Hate it. <laughs> What hey, do you think, these Rob? are show shots. Oh, oh, it's my turn. Uh, uh, wait, uh, I need Shan. to. Thank you very much. How, how did Jim do it? I need to make sure I get it the same way. He love it, love it, love it, love it, love it. <laughs> <laughs> wrong, 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 wrong. <laughs> anybody that's concerned, that sound effect is included as a joke. It is not a political yep. statement. So, <laughs> fuck yeah. Off. Uh, Morgan, uh, n- unrelated to the fuck off, what do you think about the Sean Chen review? <laughs> so, so, are we talking about how did I feel about the way they showed up, or how do I feel about how they looked? Uh, all of the above, yes. okay. but both okay. Just well, overall I... impression of the Sean Chen, okay. Well, I thought them showing up right at the end and ending it that way was good because it let you know, oh, there's trouble. Um, I thought that right here tsunami. In yeah, tsunami the girl was great because it let you know, oh, these people are horrific assholes. Um, <laughs> There's a little girl on the beach. Better do a tsunami no about sense. it. Yeah, I was just sort of like, you know, okay, that's, that's you know, lets you know. I mean, they in uh, book two, they engage in all manner of horrific and often nonsensical acts of cruelty. So it's just sort of like, why not? Oh, that's weird. Tsunami it sounds like shock and awe. 
Yeah, maybe maybe she can channel. Release the Kraken. Yeah, and then um, as far as their actual appearance, they look really exotic. Uh, The fact that they're speaking uh, a foreign language, I'm hoping at some point they speak English. Somebody I've read online said that they should be having American accents, which I don't disagree with. I think that that's a good idea. Sounds about par on course as much uh, as I accents. Texas. No, no, no. Not <laughs> Southern Texas. draw. The South has dealt with enough. We're trying to get rid of it. All right. I feel, I feel like just a general, you know, American accent is fine. So maybe they just do like. Be as a Sean Chan. We are here, here for, for your oil. To- <laughs> for, for, for just like a, you know, a general like ordering channeling in the old tongue that's fine um it looks like as far as their stylization that they're combining the shanchan and the sharans which i think is a perfectly good idea uh because what happened to the sound nothing oh it looks like nothing we still Andy, no, you're good oh Andrew i just mouth got... fuck you oh, Ralph. that oh, was oh, that's okay. all it was <laughs> it's like <laughs> yeah, it's like he set up the city gifts it went quiet yeah. so yeah i'm wondering if because they look so incredibly exotic like they look like the exoticism was like turned up to 11 if they're combining them with... these amps go to 11 yeah if i just um... want to know how love it and hate it went to a morgan's whole podcast episode <laughs> yeah <laughs> it's <right>. great. Perfect. <laughs> that's because i talk too much good point uh, good... <laughs> <laughs> You That's see why we happens. limit the guest slots we have on, right? Yeah. Right. Wow. <laughs> that has nothing to do with anything except the fact that I talk too much. And there's always nuance. But yeah, uh, no. I thought that they You're, looked. It's not that you cool. talk too much. It's that there's not enough time for us to accurately <laughs> hear you talk about your valid points. Accurate. Okay, yeah, so, so I thought that they were good. I thought that they left. Uh, all of the non-readers were like, what the fuck? And that kind of was the point. And the episode on the what the fuck? That looks like trouble. So, Daniel, I I loved them. Just everything about them, loved it. It's super great uh, for non readers and book readers. I think they that was fantastic. Also, again to Jim's point, these are the strong fucking show Sean Chan. None of these weak ass <laughs> book Sean Chan who ask people for oaths before they tsunami them into the ground. Oh Fuck you. man! <laughs> wow. <sighs> All right. All right. So we are going to wrap this up with uh, first a final thoughts. Everybody deserves their right to have a final thought. This can encompass everything. I'm going to ask you to cap it at no more than about two minutes. I'm going to be using uh, whatever Microsoft determines the clock should be. <laughs> um, actually, you know what? I'll, I'll get Alexa to do it. We're going to start with Josh. Um, as soon as you hear me say, Alexa, set a timer for two minutes, then you can go. <laughs> Suddenly glad my computer is not on speaker mode right now. So. I know, Same. right? I, that's why like, I hesitated. I was looking at mine to see if it activated. All right. Alexa, set a timer for two minutes. Two minutes, starting now. Episode eight. 80% of the show I absolutely loved. Loved, 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 loved. But there was 20% of it that I just... It was a very difficult thing for me to wrap my head around. That being said, the feeling of angst and upset and what is going to happen next, I've not felt this since reading the books. And when I finished Winter's Heart and I go, what? And I throw the book and I scream and throw a temper tantrum and I go, when's the next book coming out? The season finale, though very underwhelming initially, gives me that same sense of what's going to happen next. And I love it. Ultimately, yes, I know I gave a 6 out of 10. I stand by that. The season finale was not a finale to me. And it didn't feel very finale-ish. But I love my feeling of wondering what's going to happen next. It brings me back to reading the books and wondering what's going to happen and spending the next two years talking to my friends about what is going on, what's going to happen, what do you think is going to happen? And lets me know why places like Theoryland and Dragon Mount and Tarvalon.net why these places were so popular in the first place. I'm going to yield my time. Alexa, stop. 
Fantastic. All right. Next. Um, I'm not going to lie. I, I'm going to save uh, myself for last. So next we are going to move to Morgan. So Alexa set a timer for two minutes. What the fuck? Alexa, stop. <laughs> Alexa, set a timer for two minutes. <laughs> All right, you're good to go, Morgan. Okay, well, I thought the show overall was incredible. I think that they did really brilliant changes with the writing. I felt disquiet when I watched episode eight to begin with because I thought I couldn't understand a lot of the changes, and I thought that some of them were what they weren't actually once I you know, read an article afterwards, and it was like, oh, what I thought was happening didn't happen, and so then I felt better about it. Uh, I'm enjoying watching non-reader reacts and because every time I do that, I get a better understanding of why they make the narrative changes that they make and how effective that they actually are, which makes me enjoy it even more. Um, and, you know, I'll see people complain just vociferously on Twitter about the changes that they make. And I'm just sort of like, but you don't have anything to put forth about what you would actually do to make an adaptation. And so I just sort of feel like being super critical when you can't come, you know, come with a good narrative solution about what would be a great way to do it is unfair. I think overall the show is really great. I give it an 8 out of 10 overall. I give episode 8, you know, a 7 out of 10. I think it was the weakest of the episodes, but I think partly that's just maybe just because of a sense of anticlimax um and because there were changes or things that didn't necessarily make sense or I cannot yet see why they would have made it narratively that way. Um but that doesn't mean I didn't like it, and that doesn't mean that I'm not thinking that, you know, overall it was a terrific show, and I'm really pleased with it as an adaptation. And because the characters are really what make the Wheel of Time, and the actors are nailing the characters, frankly, at this point, I'm so invested in them, they could do whatever they wanted with the show. It could be, you know, more ink. Inc- ah, I'm done. Alexa, <laughs> stop. <laughs> Right. Hard agree though. Who shocked? Who shocked? Well, Morgan ran out of time. To finish your sentence and go ahead. Oh, Alexa, shut the fuck up. <laughs> More <laughs> You're setting too many timers. When you want her to stop, if someone stops early and you want her to stop, be Alexa, stop timer is what you need to say. <laughs> Moraine could slip her fuck pad Tarangriel into a saddlebag and go around the world and have like a romantic adventure with Swan and that could be the show and I'd be like whatever I'd be cool with that so you know, it's like I'm fine they can do whatever they want and I'm here for it so that's me that's how I feel about it next all right um <laughs> we're gonna go with Daniel hopefully I get the device right uh, you know, come on, Amazon, work with us a little bit here. Okay, we have a contract you don't know about yet, but come on. All right, Alexa, set a timer for two minutes. Two minutes, starting now. To help me so again, to help I'm going to say this life. not... Yes. I'm going to say this Thanks not in people. any way, shape, or form as a criticism on anybody else, especially any other book readers, because <laughs> I have always, from the start of the this show, watched it as a show and not as a book series. And I think that that actually does a lot of justice to the, sh- the TV show because you end up with these two different worlds of, does it shot for shot the books? And the answer is no. And if that's what you wanted, you're going to be disappointed. We've had that on the books for over a year now, that that has been true, and they've been warning us about that. Then you have just the TV show overall. And again, I can't agree more with Morgan as far as there are things in the show where I'm just like, uh, I don't understand that. And then I'll go and look at non-book readers. And they go, that made total sense to me. Narratively, as far as a TV show... That was perfectly fine. And I go, great. It's not about the up highs coming down and putting taint into the series. It's about Rafe and Sarah knowing what's going to sell to book readers, but then also what needs to sell to non-book readers. Because even though it's a New York Times bestseller, it doesn't have the fan following that Amazon is going to need 
to keep this show up for 10 seasons without getting in a shit ton of non-book readers. That's that's my thoughts. Alexa, stop the timer. Two-minute timer canceled. Nice. All right. Um, I am going to reserve some BTP privilege, and I will go last. So, uh, Jim, you're next, right? I'm ready. You All betcha. Right. Alexa, set a timer for two minutes. Two minutes, starting now. All right, the finale, it, as many have said, it didn't feel like a finale to me. I felt let down by it. I was expecting more. I felt they had set themselves up to do more than they delivered on. So that was a disappointment for me. I was thankful for the rest of the season and hoping the rest of the show would be good enough to tide us through this finale now and people would stick around for season two. Thankfully, Amazon had already committed. So they're doing the second one anyways, and they'll see us through and we'll get over this and we'll forget about this taint on our experience. Part of where I come from that is we cannot avoid the comparisons with the phenomenon and experience on TV that Game of Thrones was. And we hate those comparisons, but they nailed those season finales time after time. And so I cringe at that comparison. This was no Game of Thrones finale kind of thing. But again, I think they're setting things in place. And we'll live with it and we'll feel good about it later. I just don't feel good about it right now. I think this episode suffered more than episode seven did from Barney leaving the show from the recasting. I think they did not intend it to be what we got in the end. They gave us lemonade out of the lemons they were stuck with. And so we'll take it. We'll say thank you. There were certainly great things. No problem. But it didn't feel like I wanted. And I guess the biggest last thing I'll leave it with is there was too much then that needed explanation. How many of us were thankful for the interviews? And we could see what Rafe meant. And that's not what we should have felt after a finale going, what the? Uh, That word I don't use that you guys use on the show. You guys say it all the time if you want. But I don't. Thank you. Thank you very much. That's how I felt. And I felt bad. There we go. Alexa, stop. All right, finish out your sentence and then you're done. No, I'm good. Boom. That was it. Mike drop. As <clears> long <throat> as they don't fuck up the season eight finale quite as much of game. Amen <laughs> there. That's the one thing that they need to. <laughs> oh. All right. Yes. So I'll do mine. Uh, Alexa, set a timer for two minutes. Two minutes, starting now. All right. So I feel there are three different ways to look at the season one finale. One is as a pure entertaining television episode, which it shines in. It is entertaining television. Two is uh, from the perspective of what does it potentially set up for season two, Um, which it sets up a lot. Now, I'll come back to that if I have time because uh, it's a fallacious argument. Anyway, the third is looking at what happens in the eye of the world uh, from season one versus what happens in the books. From there, it absolutely fails. It rips a lot away. The arguments, the best argument I've seen for the Horn of Valir is it makes as much sense in the books to be where it is as it does in the TV show. I disagree. I think it makes more sense to be hidden in a pool of Sidene that would destroy anything that tried to reach in and grab it. And that's why nobody has found it. Um, which is just one example of why I, why I think that way. As for the fallacious argument of what it sets up for season two, the argument of it being a good episode because of what it sets up to happen in season two is predicated on an understanding or perception of what is going to happen in season two it is one of those arguments that cannot be validated until it actually happens. So you can't say like there, there's still valid points to make about why you enjoyed it, but saying it's a valid reason why episode eight was great to set up for season two, you're predicating that on a perceived gain from the next season, which cannot be validated until it comes out. So in terms of quantifiable validation of why X equals Y, 
it, it's it's a fallacious argument. It doesn't work. It's hey, episode eight was great because it sets up for you know loyal to go and do this and for parent to go and do this. Um, so yeah, Alexa, shut the fuck up. <laughs> so uh, that's that's kind of my thing. It's like a tree, uh, a threefold kind of look at the final episode. So with all that being said, Does after two minutes. Yeah, did Rob get Rob? his time? Yeah, did you? No. Oh. No. <laughs> so for the last <laughs> segment, Rob, you're going to finish this out here before we give our final <laughs> after episode ratings on it. I am I'm fucking terrible at this. I mean, I've had four tall boys at this point. All right. Fucking sue me. I'm empty. Well, go refill why Rob is I'm telling gonna... us why Rob. for two minutes we're wrong or right or partially all of the above for season eight. So, Alexa, set a timer for two minutes. <laughs> or ignore me. That's fine. <laughs> Fuck or you not. Too. Alexa, set a timer for two minutes. Two minutes. Starting now. Okay. So I, I really enjoyed the whole season. Uh, I don't think episode eight was the strongest. I agree with everyone there. Um, but I, I am enjoying this the way I enjoyed the books. Like the, I, I don't know what's coming. I'm excited. I have so much material for theories. It is just, I, I, I can't even think about it sometimes. And it's so much fun. I'm loving it. Um, it's just, yeah, I, I think, you know, I, I, it, nothing is perfect. You know, and this definitely has faults, but um, far more pros than cons in my book. And uh, yeah, I'm really, really enjoying it. And I'm just the the foreshadowing, the detail in things, the you know, silly things like there's an example of sheaving the sword. You know, the 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 cracks on the seal, the eye of the world. There's eight cracks, which means seven wedges in that, or you might say seven ages in the turning of the wheel. Like. Just so many small things like that, which I am loving. And yes, the last two struggled with COVID and Barney and all sorts of things like that. But I think we got very solid. And in terms of Game of Thrones, Jim, I want to talk about that quickly. I don't want it to be like Game of Thrones. I don't want it to be like, oh, well, Game of Thrones ended every season on a massive high. I'm like, I'm not, I'm, that's not what I'm worried about, interested about. I'm like, because if it just works on that scale that that sort of planning method like oh it has to have a massive season finale every time because that's what game of thrones did yeah. then all we're doing is chasing game of thrones when we should be trying to be our own thing because our own thing is better it's finished and it can always always going to kick game of thrones ass and i'm going to stop it right there Holy shit, can't argue so. about kicking game of thrones but <laughs> but the books yeah. do finish like that so, I mean, at least the books yes. are finished. Oh, yes, yes. And I, mean, I the what? world is mildly, is, is, is quite a confusing ending. Yeah. And here we are, season one, a mildly confusing ending. I'm just like, <laughs> yeah, oh. again, <laughs> more little details, you know? Lives All right, on Rob, through the TV show. Rob, I got, I, we got to have you back. I mean, we'll always have any, any of you back on. <laughs> Fucking Alexa, fuck off. <laughs> Alexa, I love that. Piss the oh, fuck that off. almost worked. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Alexa, <laughs> stop. <laughs> Hey, I just you read an curse at her. She keeps coming. I just I just read an article that Alexa like a told a little bro. girl to touch a prong with a penny. So you can't trust her. Yeah. I mean, I, so I, I so much want to have those discussions um, about you know what what does so much of this mean and having the discussions that delve more into the intrinsic metaphysics of uh, both show implications. And even uh, the, the the book series implications, because there's a lot of the book series implications that, you know, a thousand and one people have, have, have talked about. Brandon has talked about it. Maria, uh, Harry has talked about it. Twatcast has talked about it. Dust the Wheel has definitely fucking talked about it. If they haven't, they definitely should. We've got more recommendations to our take on what Dusty Wheel says than half of everything else, which is fan- uh, fantastic. If that's your recommendation, just tell us. Let us know. We're, we're fine with it. I I don't give a shit. I'll chomp off anybody's bit. I'll, I'll let them know that we are, but don't, you know, I don't, please I don't, don't chomp off my bit. I, I'd I like am. to keep my bit where it is. I am. I'm chomping off your size seven bit. Um, but the, these kind of discussions, they're fun because they always generally spawn the same sorts of that's see, like Rob is like playing Josh laughing, but it's actually him riling in pain. <laughs> um, <laughs> but these discussions always spawn off these 
really good theoretical conversations. I mean, you, you have six people here right now in this episode, whether you're listening or watching. Um, do both, please. And if you're watching, subscribe to us. Like us, unsubscribe to everybody. No, go to everybody else and subscribe to their YouTube channel. Go to yes. go and subscribe to their podcast. Go and do all that stuff. Links will be down in the description slash show notes below. Because uh, they're not one of those people that have people on and not link them in the description below. Because we love everybody that comes on and talk and you know tolerates us for you know longer than <laughs> we expected. I was about to say three hours at this point. Yeah, um, yeah it's been three yeah. hours, isn't it? <laughs> it's, it's been fun uh, though. <laughs> oh, it says twenty three. Sorry, I thought it said twenty two. But um, so these are the kind of discussions we love to have. The kind of discussions where we get into the more metaphysics of the Wheel of Time show, how it relates to the books from the show which we can only do from the show based on what we have from the show. Um, there's a lot that we've talked about where all of us have had points where we wanted to go back and counter somebody else's argument. That's the nature of discussion. That's how it works. Um, and that's just not something we built into the time here. Uh, in fact, we didn't even build into the time here what we actually discussed. So <laughs> let us know in the comments <laughs> section down below, the comments on the podcast, comments on the YouTube, whatever, down below what you think about the episode and what we said here. We're going to finish things off here with a readdressing and hopefully nobody cheated and wrote down a notepad so they can say the same number again, a ranking of season one, episode eight. And we're going to start with Daniel one out of 10. What do you rank it? So mine, mine is actually going to be the same. Uh, Cause I, it's going to be an eight, I, eight out of 10. That's I actually still really loved the the episode or the season ending, and I think that the spirit of the books was present. So I, I don't regardless of anyone else's opinions, uh, and regardless of what has been said here, which there have been great points on both directions, I eight out of ten. I don't think that's the same you said at the start. It is. I, 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 I think how you would gave you know? it a nine. Yeah, I think you gave Did it like I? a nine. Nine, oh. nine point five. <laughs> it definitely he didn't give it a nine point five. That definitely didn't. Jamie happen. says you gave it a seven, uh, which I that's know isn't right. True. I know that's not right. Yeah, but it's it's closer. Anyway, oh, anyway. It's Jamie's rating. Never mind. Anyway, uh, Morgan, oh, what do you give me. it? Okay, I still gave it a seven. Um, I think it was really strong. I don't think it was the. I think it was the weakest episode of the season but you know I just feel like it was still a good episode they were all great I loved I loved the show oh I forgot my main point my main point was that it needed uh at least another four to six weeks in post because the trial looks terrible yeah um wow all right <laughs> so like at most I upgrade I, I might upgrade mine to a six <coughs> and that's like pulling on heartstrings trying to give undue logical credence to the COVID-19 pandemic and, and, you know, the Barney Harris thing. I don't, I, I personally, and I'll, I can talk about it later. Hey, hey, if any of the three of you or anybody else wants to have me on to talk about why I don't think the COVID-19 pandemic and the Barney Harris like casting thing is a, is an excuse uh, more than happy to do it. But um, yeah, I don't think it's a valid excuse. Uh, at most I go from a five to a six out of 10. Uh, Rob, sticking with eight. You've all been eloquent and sometimes <laughs> long-winded. Um, <laughs> I mean that in a loving way, obviously. Um, I feel called out. You haven't swayed me, and I'm sticking with an eight. And uh, folks, before I get my time cut off here, um, like, subscribe, and comment below, or you're a dark friend. <laughs> I like it, Jim. What's what's your after this intellectual extravagant? Definitely a, like. <laughs> extended out discussion also with the four I still running through your veins. I still hold to my six a hard six I think what I take away from this discussion I appreciate everything you guys added to my thoughts here but I walk away the most flabbergasted that you all love the Sean Chan I can't get that <laughs> there's so much that bugged me with it and it didn't bother any of you and I feel so alone but I love you anyways maybe we just didn't have time to talk about what bugged us you know <laughs> they do have bug helmets I mean <laughs> no uh Josh your your final rating one out of ten I'm, on the show whatever your metric is I'm gonna keep it at a six because oh you I went said, down point prior. Five. all right no 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 I'm a six 
Uh, initially, it was a 6.5, I, I think. As I say, mm-hmm. like the stuff that I really loved about the show, I really, really love. But the things that I do not love about the show, I really, really don't love. And so I'm looking forward to receiving the context of future seasons. Um, and then, you know, as with the books, what's my prediction of what's going to happen is I'm going to watch season two and I'm going to be halfway through season two and I'm going to go, wait, hold on. I need, I need to go back and watch season one again. And then we're going to go back and watch season one and season one uh, episode eight is going to be phenomenal. And we're going to go, Oh, Rafe, you brilliant bastard. <laughs> oh my God. How the hell did you do that? And then we are all going to have this episode again. And I, I have booked the day off work. Um, There's a lot. You, you didn't read the fine print of the contract. It, it obligated you to a part two. Apparently. I have faith. And I was like, hold up. Episode Wait a minute. Eight Something of right. season one, the season one finale. Once we get through season two, I would be willing to bet all of our ratings will go up. That's my prediction and my gamble and my bet. Okay. All right. So uh, when I edit, I'll put season one on the screen or not season one. Yeah. I'm not going to like play season one. Um, (laughs) Is that why it's four hours long this recording? We almost have enough time. Season one in like Uh, like, like, two times speed or something, you know? (laughs) First part of the episode when we give our ratings, I'll put it up on each of our screens. At the end, I'll put up each of our ratings again and uh, you can go back and look and compare how they may or may not change. By all means, if you disagree, if you have comments, you have thoughts on it, which I expect a lot of people do, given that it is the the uh, season finale. Give us all of your thoughts. Yes. Hello. Oh, in yes. the comments. Yes. Give us I've, I've stayed up till 10 past four in the morning, so if you don't comment, it's true. I, I'm coming for Please you. Please do <laughs> Malky Rob a favor and comment below. Go yeah. follow his channel. He's he's dedicated to this. Okay, yeah. Yeah. Uh, he never sleeps. You, you you will say obsessed so nicely. It's very kind. Yeah. <laughs> That's what I was about to get into as we round this out. Again, we give our guest uh, another opportunity, another chance to tell where they're from, what they do, that kind of stuff. However, you want to plug yourselves. And Rob, we're going to start with you. However, you want to plug yourself. Go for it now. Plug yourself on our stream. Do it. Oh, wow, that's, See what uh, happens. Where, plug where else could I plug myself but on people. Black Tower? Except maybe at North Harbor. But um, yeah, huh? go to the, go to the YouTube, folks. Like you know, that's that. Go, go to YouTube. Go sub there. And uh, yeah, apparently I only have two minutes because uh, that unit's going to beep Andrew again. Um, but yeah, just find me there. Um, but you, yeah, everywhere except the blighted place called Facebook, you can just search Mapco Talks and you will find me. I do lots of everything. And um, yeah, hit up, hit up the YouTube. That's the one no one's going to at the moment in terms of like right? something. Like We're having the same problem there. It's like, disappointing. What? what do you mean? What do you mean you? We. But <laughs> we also don't put out like YouTube exclusive content. Like our live streams and our, sh- uh, we'll, we'll talk about this like briefly after. <laughs> yeah. This is where you're getting into like the more Patreon style content. Anyway, Morgan. Yes. For somebody that does so much prep, uh, and uh, here's the thing. I don't point it out to disparage anybody else that doesn't do the same amount. Everybody does some degree of prep for their episodes. But of the other Wheel of Time content creators that we have worked with, or at least I have worked with, and talked to you about the process, um, and we, we've got another little kind of content creator advisory episode that's coming out here in the near future. I just have to you know, buckle down and do my job and fucking edit. Um, and, and it'll be out there. You put such an incredible amount of work into your episodes. Like there's one thing to say that, you know, editing an episode is, uh, can be a struggle and an effigy of like, you know, like Greek worship proportions of itself. But to sit there and do the research and essentially write a full research paper on it and then do a podcast by yourself on it. Like I, I can't imagine doing a podcast with, well, with just myself. Um, I would hope everybody would unsubscribe and be like, yeah, you're fucking trash. Well, not hope, <laughs> but you put so much individual effort into this. You, 
I don't want to say you're in this by yourself because we all support you and we all want you to succeed and we love what you do. But when it comes to the finished product, you do this by yourself. Like yeah. I, I, I can't promote you enough for the amount of work you put in to what you do and the content you put out. It's incredibly amazing. I've used it as research and resource material for episodes we've done in the past. I guarantee I'll do it for in the future. Tell everybody where they can find what you do. Um, well, if you go to my Twitter at Pot of the Dragon, there's links for both my YouTube and for my um, podcasting host site. So on YouTube, I'm a little more relaxed. My go-to thing is more visible and less prepared. Um, so I'm more likely to just kind of talk out my ass about the show. And then, yeah, I do... I mean, Andrew makes it sound more grand than it is, is like research level paper, but it is lazier and sloppier. I do, you know. Wait, you write like five scripts. Come on, Morgan. Two. I do two drafts, but the, I do two drafts because the first one I do actually talk out my ass. And so I want to sound smarter. So I like do up the notes. And then that way, when I do it the second time, I have something to read off. So it sounds intelligent. Morgan, <laughs> two scripts is three more scripts than we ever do. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and we've even dabbled in writing scripts. And even when we have a script, we don't script. All that means is I'm afraid of making mistakes. So yeah, I'm, I just, yeah, I, uh, I, I'm really interested well, in doing, doing it right. Literary analysis of the wheel of time. You know, at one point I wanted to be an English professor, but you know, life got in the way. And in the end it was like, all I'd ever want to teach about is the wheel of time. And you're never going to get, you know, a university department head to sign off on, you know, that shit. So it's just hey, kind of like, give it five years. There'll be a degree for you to, you know, oh, university. Yeah, they'll, be, they'll be begging you. Be like, oh, yep. you work with Amazon? Please come and teach it. You're laying <laughs> like, the I'm foundations sorry, now. But Amazon is paying for my yacht. Why would I want to go work in an I mean, academic? That's, that's right? fair. <laughs> We're all chill. Look, yeah, yeah, you, throw right. in, yeah. you throw in Will of Time content and you get a free like two yachts with it. That's how it Besides, works. Besides, I if I'm if I'm you know acting as a professor in an environment, I can't say fuck. And I say it a lot in my podcast. And also it it's you know, it's oh. a little more casual. So it's yeah, it's uh right. and it's very, you know personal at the same time there's a lot of you know hu humanistic i guess somebody called it humanistic elements i don't know i overshare oh, that's what it is you're super humanistic like, <laughs> i yeah. overshare a lot well, that's, so that's, that's part of what makes a podcast so engaging right? feeling yeah. like the person that is listening that is stuck in their car for hours of travel is just listening and feel like they're part of the conversation that's what makes a lot of podcasting so engaging i mean it's not the, the only uh the only amount but before you hop to Jim, I want to ask a quick question of Morgan from live chat. Nope. Oh, they're, yeah. they're curious. Does Percival help you with the uh, scripts and the, the podcast? Uh, uh, no, Percival is lazy and, you know, he, 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 he peeps outside the door, you know, he, he peeps like a, well, not exactly like a bird, but, you know, if a cat were a bird, it would be him. <laughs> no, um, no, 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 <laughs> so, uh, Why are you um, going to feed me? <laughs> yeah, basically. Said. That being said, uh, Rob, I, I know you know this, but we do listen to the content you put out as well. And a lot of your theories and stuff will absorb some component of into talking about. It may not always be obvious, but you know we do listen and absorb. Uh, Jim, uh, a lot of the same. Listening to uh, a dad that has a son that is going through the series and just kind of pulling some of these ideas and thoughts this, this is what makes the Wheel of Time Phantom and especially the community of content creators uh, so incredible. Um, Jim, shout out what you do, where you're from, where people can find you so that they can get the same incredible source material as we do. Yeah, uh, for our podcast, Fantasy for the Ages, that's, that's our niche. It's my son and I. You know, I... There was this huge Wheel of Time fandom out there years ago in the 90s and stuff. When I'm reading the books, I knew none of it. I never found any of it. I had to make someone that I could talk to Wheel of Time with. So <laughs> That's commitment. That's real we, commitment, folks. We, we have a 29-year age gap, and that it brings the humor scene. and fun to our podcast episodes. Because he comes from his perspective. I have mine. We see it very differently. We talk about it and then we go on these tangents where he's teaching me what the young people say. And, and I'm like, what? And, and it's just, that's our element. That's the our wheel of time But we're really turns. just sharing. And I turn out <laughs> spawn to talk about. That's turns. it. That's it. 
I, yeah, yeah, Rand is the I, dragon I reborn. Him right, you know? Hard cap. <laughs> so we get to talk about this stuff and we, we share the same fun and passion for Wheel of Time and for all fantasy fiction. But you can find us. Uh, we're active on Twitter. In fact, you know, we, we've got all sorts of fun things happening all the time on Twitter. So look for <laughs> Fair Fantasy for the Ages. <laughs> yes, there is a tournament right now in January. Uh, just getting going. Um, and we're, you know, we do have a YouTube channel and our podcast is available, Spotify, Apple, Google, all the places anybody looks for stuff. So just come find us. We do have a website too, but I don't think anybody ever goes there, but it's there. Fantasy for the ages. Come find us. We're good people. Zach would say we have cookies. What's the, what's the uh, website link? It's just fantasy for the ages.com. Uh, fantasy for the ages. <laughs> not, not, see, you know how Jim com. said no one goes there. Like even Jim doesn't go. No, I'm joking. <laughs> yeah. I, I, no, no. You Google it. You find it. Now nah, the easiest way to find us honestly is Twitter. And we always have a link there to our discord too. We've got friends on discord. It's a great place to hang out, yep. have fun. Some of you have been there. It's don't good to see and, you around. Don't try and win the ranking competition. You will just lose. Like I gave up trying to chase that down a while ago. I was like, Oh my gosh. <laughs> Jordo, Jordo's got, is it Jordo has got that unlock still, isn't it? Oh man. Jordo has us all crushed. It's true. It's <laughs> my hey. server. And I look up at him from below. How's the air? <laughs> yeah, it's great. <laughs> but Hey, um, if at the worst case scenario, you can't find the podcast, you can't find the YouTube, all the links are down in the description below. If you're watching on YouTube, they're in the show notes. If you're listening on audio uh, platform, any audio platform, they're all shared across the same uh, way. We cannot thank the three of you so much because, uh, like we said at the beginning, we had a plan for this episode. We had a planned guest. They came down with uh, covid it cannot join and through uh, a mutually beneficial like kind of content creator community you were all able to join in with us and we we cannot thank you enough um a six-person panel to talk about episode eight obviously was a ton to take on and i'm not going to talk too much longer about it because we're already well over time but Thank you so much for this. Go and make sure you follow everybody that has been a guest on this show. If you want anything of ours, blacktarpod.com. Go there. You'll find everything about us. You'll find a way to follow us, to find our YouTube, to find our Twitter, to find our Instagram, or to find our TikTok. Hopefully it should be up there by now because we have one of those. Uh, because, you know, we are people in 25 plus year age group that use TikTok because it is what it is. <laughs> And Critter proved that it is <laughs> definitely a platform we should be on. But that has been it for our review with guest of Season 1, Episode 8 of The Wheel of Time. You've all been fantastic for, tolerate, for tolerating us for so long. Our guest especially. I don't know how you did it. You deserve a prize <laughs> for it. If I had one to give you, I would give it to you. Thank you so much for joining us. Uh, Andrew, I have been, give it to you. I have been Andrew, your Bajan Mahal. And I have been Josh, your Sorovan Mahal. And we hope that uh, you're just a little bit more mad now than you were at the beginning of this show. And I have been Daniel, your Amin Khan Mahal. And from all of us here at the Black Tower Podcast, as well as all of our guests, we are hoping that you are having a great morning. And in case we don't see you again, good afternoon, good evening, and good night. Just fitting.